We are tuned in to fitness and consciousness. Today's episode is called New Keys. I just opened my gym, just moved in yesterday. Um, that was April 6th. Um, and I can finally announce publicly that I've partnered with the world's greatest powerlifter ever in history, Valery Fedorenko. It was this crazy set of uh, circumstances that uh, made it from the time um, I, well, I'll just tell the little story. So I've been studying his method for uh, several years, many years. I've been doing using kettlebells for nine, ten years, something like that. And even though I, I got into them originally from reading a book called The Russian Kettlebell Challenge by Pavel, I learned about Valery <clears throat> Fedorenko and these awesome records he was setting, these just like superhuman feats of uh, strength endurance, power endurance. And uh, so years go by. And I'm thinking of getting his certification. I actually was working towards his get, getting his certification. And two weeks from that happening, this is still several years ago, he uh, changed the way that he did his certifications. And I understand why that is now. But at the time, it was just changed. And, and that's okay. So, and uh, so I, I ended up getting a different certification that, and that would be strong first. So, uh, that was four years ago that I got that certification. It expires next month and I'm not, I'm not, uh, renewing it. And I was planning on not renewing it for several months now. I was going to test for my level two, but it was just like, I just don't want to, I, I just, I, I don't have anything against strong first. But it was just time for me to move on to something else. And that something else is just more of my own method. And I still have plenty to learn. And I'm excited about learning different, some different things. So I was, I've wanted my own gym for a long time. And I've been an independent trainer at gyms for the last four years. Uh, I started as an employee uh, trainer in 1999, and I worked at a, a few gyms doing that, and uh, well, I didn't like being an, an employee trainer. I'd rather make less money doing something else than, than being an employee trainer. Um, not that there's anything wrong with that either. It, it's... Um, the right thing for some people and it was not right uh, for me or it was for a while it's, it it I learned a lot working with a bunch of different people so anyways we fast forward to um, I quit teaching classes I was teaching at you know uh, White Pine um, and it was I was doing that for over two years it's such a cool place so many great things happen there it was just time to move on for, um, and I had been thinking about getting my own gym for a, a long time, but never really seriously looking into it. Um, maybe like a year or so ago, I actually called about um, an, an office space to do that and didn't follow through with it. I just, you know, checked on some prices at this place. Well, I called that same building back. I called the guy that runs it. And, you know, I was asking what he had. And he said he had, you know, something that was about 450 square feet. Okay. You know, I can, you know, told me the price. Okay. And then... There was this other one that was like 1,700 square feet, but it would have been too much of a jump for me. I, I couldn't really justify taking a chance like that 
to pay that kind of money uh, for that size of a place. I, I didn't need a place that big, um, although it would be cool. In some ways, I didn't need it. So I'm like, okay, well, can I come and see the place Monday? You know, I said, and this is uh, just a few weeks ago, and maybe this was on a uh, Thursday. Well, so I get a Facebook friend request from Valeri Fedorenko. And I don't know if we were friends before, uh, or maybe I was just following him because he was maxed out on his, his friend. But he like disappeared for a couple years. I found out he like he was moved back to Kyrgyzstan to, um, I'm trying to pronounce it right. I was working with him on my pronunciation of Kyrgyz, Kyrgyz, Kyrgyzstan. Uh, uh, and he's waiting for his wife to get her green card. So he was there for two years and then just came back. So his Facebook said he was in Chicago. And so what he meant though was in like kind of the Chicago area, very broadly speaking, to come to find out. So well, I, I sent him, I accepted his friend request and I, and I sent him a message right away inviting him on the podcast. And so he's like, okay, let's talk. Uh, he, he, uh, I think he wasn't quite sure what a podcast is. And um, so we were just talking for a while. You know, he's like, okay, you know, what, what are you doing? And so I said, well, I'm looking into it, you know, get, getting a gym. I'm um, talking to a couple buddies about partnering and, uh, and you know, so we're we're just talking about stuff like that, what what we're doing, and and I'm still I think he's like in Chicago, and so that was like say on a Thursday, and then he calls me back, and we made plans to for him to be on the the podcast Sunday. So uh, the next day, which is Friday, he sends me a message asking if we can talk the next day, which is Saturday. All right, sure, okay. I'm thinking he just wants to get a better idea of what I want to talk about. You know, English is not his first language. He wants to um, just kind of get what I want to talk about. So we talk Saturday morning, and he says, well, maybe we can do something better than a podcast. Turns out he lives about 20 minutes away from me in Indianapolis. It's like a, the town like just north of Indianapolis, but it's 20 minutes away from me. And you know, he's like, okay, I want to find a gym also. You know, and if we could do this thing, you'd have my full support. And, this, and I'm like, what? <laughs> am, I, am I being, is this a trick or am I really talking to the world's greatest power lifter or a uh, kettlebell lifter that ever lived. And, and so uh, we made a plan to uh, meet the next day at Starbucks. Okay. So that was on Saturday morning where I found out he was local and we made the plan to meet at Starbucks the next day, Sunday. Well, Saturday night I had a sweat lodge. My friend does, uh, I have a couple of friends that do, uh, like Lakota style sweat lodges and often during these sweat lodges people pray for someone else someone's going through something and they and they're praying for them and and you're in the sweat lodge and you're like sweating and kind of like suffering a little bit for them and it's kind of a sacrifice sort of a thing kind of I mean it's not like a you know sometimes it gets really hot and it gets pretty really miserable in there and then other times it's just like, it's just hot. It's, it's not that, it's not that bad, but sometimes they're difficult, very difficult. And so all the other ones that I've done, I was praying for someone else, but I knew going into this one, like several days ahead that, okay, I'm, I'm praying for myself this time because, and my prayer for myself is I want to know who to go into business with because I'm talking to friends and they're like maybe so uh i had one of my friends he um asked me to like can we meet for a coffee uh, tomorrow okay and this was like you know weeks before even what i'm talking about 
I'm like, sure. So he was talking to me about like what he's going through. Like he's a, a trainer also. And um, it's kind of like feeling out the idea of starting his own business. And so we're talking about that as a possibility. I had another friend uh, get a hold of me that was, uh, he used to come to my workshops and he was talking, and he's a trainer now. And he was talking about opening his own business. And um, a couple of years ago, uh, we had met with somebody else that was going to be like an investor at this big kind of a gym. And we would be the instructors, but it, it, didn't, it didn't end up working out. But anyways, and somebody else was like, oh, well, you need somebody to teach this there, or you need somebody to do this, or, oh, I'd like to do this, or partner. So I had like this all this stuff coming in from different directions and these are friends of mine. So, but then people were like, some of them might be better off renting a space for just an hour or two or like, it was just like forwards, backwards, forwards, backwards, forwards, backwards, backwards, backwards. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna try to get a place that I can afford by myself with the clients that I have right now because I want to do this, I want to be, be make sure I'm smart about it and not just get a place that I'll have to, um, you know, move out of after three months of not being able to pay rent or something. So I was like, okay, do the sweat lodge that Saturday night. It was, it was a good one. I drove back that night. Um, the sweat lodge is it's about an hour, almost two hours away from where I live. That one particular one, anyways. And so I met with Valeri the next day at Sunday at noon, and we talked at Starbucks for over four hours. And it was just like, in a way, it was kind of surreal because he's like one of my like uh, lifting heroes, the guy that I've studied and. Uh, but it was also very normal. It was just normal also. And his uh, vision for the, the business, uh, which our business is kind of like two businesses in one now. Uh, you know, his thing and my thing, I'll be learning from him and uh, be able to teach his method his way. And I'm also doing my own thing still. Body weight, barbells, medicine balls, dumbbells, all, all kinds of stuff. So meet for four hours and it's just like, everything is cool. Everything just seems perfect. So then the next day I already had plans to go see the space for the new gym that was planned before I even knew he lived 20 minutes away from me. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to check this place out tomorrow. I'll let you know how it goes. So I go check it out. I'm like, yeah, this place is cool. I mean, it's not real big, but that's okay. Uh, it's, it's in a, it's a quiet spot. And, uh, so I was like, okay, if you want to come check it out, we can check it out tomorrow. So he's like, okay. So he met me there on Tuesday and he's taking a look. He's like, yeah, this is, this is cool. He's like, I, he said that he didn't really want to be teaching any more than 10 people at a time, um, to do like workshops. And, uh, so it was like 10 people can fit in there. <laughs> Probably not a whole lot more, not many more than that comfortably and safely, but we can, we can do that. And uh, I like working in small groups also. I, I don't want my uh, clients and students to just be a face in the crowd. I, I've been a face in the crowd at workshops and it's like, I didn't, you know, what am I doing here? What, I didn't even learn hardly anything. And, um, you know, just to get to be by this, you know, some, a, a yoga workshop is the one I'm talking about. So it's like this kind of famous yoga teacher. And I wasn't not impressed. I was not impressed. Uh, anyways, so that was a Tuesday where we met at the gym and, uh, I told him, you know, I'm going to bring my application I picked up application for it Monday. I said, uh, if you want to get on the lease, 
you know, they need your uh, account information, all that, you know, this kind of stuff. So I said, I'll have all my stuff filled out already. You can take it, whatever. So I meet him there. Well, since he had like, everything was so fast, he didn't, well, it, it doesn't really matter. It's kind of like beside the point. He's getting on the lease next, next month or it's very, whatever. That, that part doesn't matter. Uh, Cause everything just happens so, so fast. Um, but anyways, so Saturday, yesterday. Oh, so I got approved for the place on Thursday. And then, you know, they asked me when I wanted to move in. I basically said two weeks from then. So this is just a couple weeks old, like two and a half weeks old, this uh, information. And uh, I, him and I moved in yesterday. We had a couple of friends helping, Jody, Joey, Sam, jo uh, Jody's kids who've, you know, trained with me for a couple of years. And uh, it was like fun. You know, we're, we're moving like all these tons of steel and it, it was just fun. We went and picked up a couple mats, horse stall mats for the floor, kind of like a platform so people can, you know, if they drop a kettlebell, it won't hurt the floor or the, or the bell. And it was just like this really cool time. It just, and so today I went back, um, just organized a few things. I had to get a trash can and some, you know, soap for the bathroom and uh, just feel things like that. And I mean, the place is, uh, you know, ready to go pretty much. I'm still going to be adding a couple of details, getting a coffee maker. Cause one of the things that I want to do is, you know, not just be lifting there, but have a place, you know, whether it's like I'm talking to a new potential client or, uh, maybe have like meetings there and, um, you know, or maybe just have like a couple friends over, maybe we'll do a little bit of lifting, a little bit of body weight stuff, a little bit of whatever we want to do, just talking, hanging out, have a Keurig, um, uh, Jody said she's given me her Keurig. She had one, um, she doesn't use. So getting that, going to get a tea kettle, electric tea kettle, hot water maker, hot water maker thing to make tea or use it uh, for a French press or something like that for the coffee. So I want it to be like a place where people can just kind of like come and hang out too. And uh, it's, it's a really cool space already. You know, the kids put the pull-up bar together. It's a pull-up bar dip and dip station thing. And yeah, so it's one of the things that I wanted was I wanted to get away from like the loud gym that was like the crowd. So it's, um, the, like, I'm pretty particular about my music. I like a lot of different kinds of music, but if I'm working with a client and I'm trying to talk about techniques and, and make corrections, I don't want some rap bumping through my skull. I, it's like, I'm, I'm trying to concentrate here. So at this place, there's not going to be loud music. I took my uh, Bluetooth speaker there today. I might get a better one because I, I like good sound quality. So I might get one that's like nicer. It'll sound even better at low volumes. But uh, I just play like, I like a lot of different kinds of music, but there's some stuff that just drives me bonkers that like manufactured, um, everything done on a computer and the uh, voice thing, what's called auto tune. And it's like, uh, I just, can't handle that so and i can let the, the clients pick the music too um but i have to prove of it there may, there may be quite a lengthy process to get uh, approval for um the radio controls uh, it might be uh very difficult very very difficult like more difficult than like cia clearance and stuff like 
I really need to understand your, no, it's not going to be that difficult, but I like good music. Part of what we're going to be doing is uh, workshops, as I mentioned, and uh, we're expecting people to fly in from all over for these. Uh, Valeria is certified like 3,000 coaches before. He's going to be updating his information. And, you know, he's a world champion, so, and people want to learn from him. I'm pretty good myself. And, you know, people want to learn from me. So this is kind of a uh, destination place for – uh, especially kettlebell lifting and then people that are you know more local you can you can do private training with us you know um, I have I have some of uh, I have some open spots in my schedule I'm uh, not a lot but if if you're interested in in working with me send me a message I guess if you're listening to this podcast the easiest uh, Email to remember would be fitness and consciousness at Gmail. And we'll see what we can work out. And if you're not local, I also do um, uh, online training using Zoom. So I can watch your form. You can be anywhere in the world as long as you have a decent internet connection. You can be anywhere in the world. I can watch you. I can give corrections. I can demonstrate. And you can record it. So you can go back and watch the recording. Oh, my knees did come in when I was doing the squats. I get what he was saying now. Or, um, my elbow wasn't locked out completely when I was doing the press, or I wasn't whatever. You'll be able to like go back and look, which is a, which is a pretty neat feature. Um, that it can happen, like when you come and train with me in person, but it's more difficult. I I don't normally. Uh, record people when when I'm working with them one on one. I don't want to be messing with my phone and met, like, I don't like that. So the idea is to just have this quiet spot where people can really learn, easier to focus, good music, like re reasonable volumes, and people can start anywhere. Like one of the thing that. You know, like a, a, a friend of mine was telling another friend of his who's, I, you know, I, I guess he's a friend of mine too. I, I, I just haven't met him a lot of times. But like he told him that I was opening a gym, you know, and, you know, the other guy said that he had been starting to work out and stuff. He told him I'm opening a gym. He goes, oh, well, I'm not ready for that yet. You know, I'm just getting started. And there's, like, there's this weird thing that's like people think they need to get in shape before they start working with me for, for some reason. And I've heard people, some people say that like what I do is intimidating or like, it's, it's really not. That's uh, it, just like in, in the mind I've worked with, you know, you might see me working with somebody who's you know, a 25 year old male, super powerful, uh, explosive. And so if, if somebody else is like 60 years old and, um, you know, not, not so active or more pass or they're passive or like whatever. They may look at that and say, Oh, that's what he does. That's not for me. Well, you didn't see me working with the seven year old kid, the 70 year old man, the, the guy that can barely walk the guy that's using a cane. And one of the guys that was using the cane was able to stop using his cane. So I've worked with a lot of people from with all kinds of conditions from, um, you know, beginners to athletes, skinny, heavy, everything. And of course, the last thing I would ever want is for someone to get hurt. So the whole idea is to have these smart programs wise progressions you know is it time to can we push a little bit now or not not okay we'll just we'll stay back then we'll just keep this pace and then if you're really feeling it okay it looks it forms good everything's good now it's time to push okay 
nice. And I don't try to train people to be like me, to do the stuff that I do. Um, my exercise selection may, may not include very many things at all compared to what I may have other people doing. And I don't also don't do just like tons of different stuff just to do tons of different stuff. Everything makes sense. The programming all makes sense. Uh, there's maybe some time to uh, kind of get off of the program and like, for instance, like, uh, might depend who you are, but for instance, like most of the time, like barbell or bicep curls with dumbbells to just stand there doing bicep curls are probably not going to be included in somebody's regular program. Um, they, there might be a reason for it, but I'd say there's usually not. You can develop very strong arms with, without them. I'm not going to get into the whole philosophy of that right now, <clears throat> but there might be a time when like, okay, we've, here we are. Let's let's pump up the arms for for fun, just to like. Uh, no, you can do this much weight, or to, you know, just get the blood pumping through there. Get get a nice swell on in your arms, and you know, there's nothing wrong with that either. I just think for most uh, advanced programming, curls don't really fit very well. So. Um, I'm going to read this thing. It's going to take me a few minutes. Um, by Cleo Gabran. And uh, yeah, it'll take me a few minutes to read it. Uh, I didn't want to spend a lot of time talking about the, the new gym. I don't, um, I just wanted to like explain it and um, let people know where we are. It's in South Broderp, South Broderp area. It's Indianapolis. Like the, um, north side of Indianapolis, not too far north. Uh, the address is 1111 East 54th Street, uh, Suite 100A. And um, yeah, if you can, you can feel free to send me a message, Fitness and Consciousness at Gmail. Uh, so this is by Clil Gabran, and it's called Of Music. I sat by one whom my heart loves, and I listened to her words. My soul began to wander in the infinite spaces where the universe appeared like a dream and the body like a narrow prison. The enchanting voice of my beloved entered my heart. This is music, O oh friends, for I heard her through the sighs of the one I loved and through the words half uttered between her lips. With the eyes of my hearing, I saw my beloved's heart. My friends, music is the language of spirits. Its melody is like the frolicsome breeze that makes the strings quiver with love. When the gentle fingers of music knock at the door of our feelings, they awaken memories that have long lain hidden in the depths of past. The sad strains of music bring us to mournful recollections, and her quiet strains bring us joyful memories. The sound of strings makes us weep at the departure of a dear one, or makes us smile at the peace God has bestowed upon us. The soul of music is the spirit. The soul of music is of the spirit, and her mind is of the heart. When God created man, he gave him music as a language different from all other languages. And early man sang her glory in the wilderness, and she drew the hearts of kings and moved them from their thrones. Our souls are like tender flowers at the mercy of the winds of destiny. The tr they tremble in the morning breeze and bend their heads under the falling dews of heaven. The song of the bird awakens man from his slumber and invites him to join in the psalms of glory to eternal wisdom that has created the song of the bird. Such music makes us ask ourselves the meaning of the mysteries contained in the ancient books. When the birds sing, do they call to the flowers in the fields? Or are they speaking to the trees? Or are they echoing the murmur of the brooks? For man with his understanding cannot know what the bird is saying, nor what the brook is murmuring, nor what the waves whisper when they touch the beaches slowly and gently. Man with his understanding cannot know what the rain is saying when it falls upon the leaves of the trees or when it taps at the window panes. 
He cannot know what the breeze is saying to the flowers in the fields. But the heart of man can feel and grasp the meaning of those sounds that play upon his feelings. Eternal wisdom often speaks to him in a mysterious language. Soul and nature converse together while man stands speechless and bewildered. Yet has not man wept at the sounds, and are not his tears eloquent understanding? Divine music, daughter of the soul of love, vase of bitterness and of love, dream of the human heart, fruit and sorrow, dream of the human heart, fruit of sorrow, flower of joy, fragrance and bloom of feeling, tongue of lovers, revealer of secrets, mother of the tears of hidden love, inspirer of poets, composers, architects, unity of thoughts within fragments of words. Designer of love out of beauty, wine of the exulting heart in a world of dreams, heartener of warriors and strengthener of souls, ocean of mercy and sea of tenderness. O oh, music, in your depths we deposit our hearts and souls. Thou hast taught us to see with our ears and, ear, and hear with our hearts. So I don't think you get that when you go to the gym and hear that. <clears throat> No, I, I don't. Yeah. Anyways, <laughs> Khalil Gibran. Uh, really like the way he writes. I got this book. Um, it's called A Second Treasury of Khalil Gibran. Uh, it has a bunch, of, uh, a few of his books in it. A lot of these short little stories. I don't know if they're like stories. Short little, whatever they are. So it's like the the new keys, new keys. That's the name of the show, the episode. And you know when I was getting ready for the show, I started looking through some old papers that were my dad's, like stuff that he had written. He died in 2005. And I drink coffee pretty much every show. And I drink it out of his mug. Let's see here. And I burned some sage. I have two sage bundles that were given to me from two different friends. I burned a little bit of each of them. I burn incense, and today's incense is Goloka. Um, might look backwards on the thing, but Nag Champa Agarbati. So, uh, Nag Champa is like sandalwood and something else, and uh, Agarbati is like, uh, I think, the, just the stick that goes through the incense. I don't get. I should have an incense sponsor for this show. If I don't, if you want to sponsor me, incense makers, you can uh, get a hold of me. I like good incense. <laughs> so the keys, uh, I was thinking, all right, well, keys, and, you know, if you listen to the show, I break things down. It's like, what are keys? Well, you have like your car keys. You have your house keys. You know, and then you have like, these like key points. Like key, like wisdom keys, and you have like all these different meanings of keys. And so I was thinking, you know, kind of how how surreal it is for me, like wanting to get my own place from a long time ago. And maybe if I would have got it a long time ago, it's so weird how how things end up working out. It's Timing can be pretty amazing sometimes. And sometimes things that at the time we really want them to work, we really want them to work and then they don't work out. And then maybe a month later, maybe a year later, five years later, we were like, Oh, well, if that did work out, then I wouldn't be here. And I like it here. So my, um, I guess advice to, that is just keep working, keep working. 
and like I, you know, I kind of had a, a little you know image in my mind of you know somebody keeping their nose to the grindstone and just just put their chin down and just work and work and work and keep working and keep working, keep doing what you want to do, keep doing your thing, do what you have to do, and then one day you'll look up and you'll see yourself surrounded by greatness and a part of that greatness. You'll look around and you'll have awesome friends that are not complaining about helping you move tons of steel, <laughs> but they're having fun. They, they <laughs> seem like everybody had a good time moving. And normally, um, whenever I've moved, you know, from like, from an apartment to an apartment or house to an apartment or whatever, I would move every single thing myself that I could carry by myself. And I only asked for help carrying the couch, the dresser, the, you know, if, if it took two people to carry it, that's the only stuff that was left when I would ask for help. Every single other thing that I could do by myself, I would do it. So this time, I could have done that. Everything that's in the gym, half of, about half of the stuff um, uh, uh, Valeri brought, half of it I brought. Uh, I, I could have carried all my stuff by myself. It would have taken a lot longer than having, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six people helping. Uh, but I could have done it, but it was just kind of like cool to like look around and everybody's kind of having fun and excited, excited for me. And just like, you know, and I have these keys and then, you know, the, the keys to the door. It's like the, the, you know, try you know, not trying to travel too far down this key rabbit hole, but, like the, like the building has a key and then our room has a key and like the, the so like the keys are like they I don't want to say it's like so they, they like literally open the doors right so that's not a big stretch you have a, a key to the door you put the key in the door and it, and it opens or maybe it doesn't. Uh, maybe you have maybe it's worn out and you have to get a new key or whatever. But so then there's other keys like keys to like the way you live your life, like philosophies, philosophy keys, uh, and you those open doors for you also. I think after a while, if if you start off and, and you're somebody that tries hard and you're somebody that keeps going, and people trust you then they'll be able to see, people can see that and they'll want to partner with you. And that's like one of the keys to success, I guess, is make sure you're, um, you know, loyal. And I have a thing where I say, like, be loyal to yourself first. But that doesn't mean like, you know, screw people over or anything like that and be selfish. But it's more like some people will maybe um, diminish their own morals because somebody else wants them to do something. Like, well, this is a friend of mine. I'm going to go ahead and do this, even though I don't uh, agree with this, you know. But if, if you just do what you think is right, and that's usually doing right by other people, then it'll pay off. And I, this thing with the gym for me is, it's like, if you just work and work and work and work, then you become this way. And then you look around and like, you're, you're just, you know, if, if you try hard enough, then you can have what you want. So it's, it's a pretty amazing uh, feeling. And I don't mean to keep rambling about the gym, so I know most people that are listening aren't going to end up coming to the gym or come. I mean, some people will, 
most people probably won't. So I'm not trying to make this episode just about that, but it's more like, and maybe I'm not explaining it so well, but you know, being becoming a magnet for what you want to attract. And it takes time um, to to develop that. I'm going to do the random roomy readings. So I've uh, I do this on the show sometimes. I'll just like pick a random page from uh, roomy. This is from the roomy day book, 365 poems and teachings from the beloved Sufi master selected and translated by Kabir and Camille Holminski. Close eyes. And we have, uh, the differences between dogs and lions. I haven't read this before. So when it comes out of my mouth, it'll be the first time I hear it. How could someone who is himself, like a straw in the wind of desire, discern the oppressor from the oppressed. First deal with the oppressor in yourself, your own frenzied ego. A dog always growls at the poor and helpless. As far as it can, it snaps at the poor. But know that lions act differently because a lion, a lion would be ashamed to prey on its neighbors. Um, Maybe that'll make more sense to me later. It doesn't seem like I'm quite with that one at first, but I'll uh, think about that. Uh, this is just the, from the opposite page here. Like foxes, we play with our tails. Foxes in the chase are saved by their legs, but these foxes believe their tails saved them. And so they play fondly with their tails, thinking, without you, I'd be dead. Oh, bold-eyed fox, save your legs from being broken. Without legs, what use is your tail? We are like foxes, and the noble saints are like our legs. They saved us from a hundred kinds of reprisals. Our subtle contrivings are like our tails. We play fondly with our tails, left and right. We wag our tails in argument and cunning, in order that so-and-so may be amazed at us are seeking to impress people, are eagerly grasping at divinity. All the guile we use to catch hearts has left us in a ditch unaware. You are in a ditch, you rascal, so don't try to twist someone else's mustache. Unless you yourself have found the garden, don't pull anyone's sleeve to try to lead them. If you're not first a servant of the beloved, don't wish to make yourself a sovereign. In your desire to impress others, you've tied a noose around the neck of your soul. O oh, fox, abandon this tale of contrivance and devote your heart to the lords of the heart. Uh, should we do another one? The dervish. Beyond the body, life, and soul is the dervish. Better than earth and sky is the dervish. God's purpose was not to create these worlds, but the purpose of these worlds is the dervish. Okay. Heart and body. When you want to go somewhere, your heart goes first to see that place and finds out what it is like. I like that already. <clears throat> I'm going to start over. When you want to go somewhere, your heart goes first to see that place and finds out what it's like. Then it returns and takes your body there. People are all bodies in relation to the saints and prophets who are the heart of this world. First, they have journeyed out of their human attributes of flesh and skin. They have traveled to the other world. They observe both the other world and this world and the depths and heights and traverse all the stages to understand how to make that journey. Then they return and invite the people saying, Come to that original world. This world is a ruin, a perishing abode. We have found a delightful place and have come to tell you about it. Uh, 
Let's see. Um, looking through this, one of my favorite writers, songwriters is um, Robert Hunter. He wrote for a few bands, but mainly the Grateful Dead. Um, I'm flipping through this book. I was going to read something. I didn't have anything picked out. I, was, I knew that I made the outline for this show. And, you know, it was mostly what I've already covered. So I thought, Ah, help on the way. Love this song. Paradise waits on the crest of a wave, her angels in flame. She has no pain like a child. She is pure. She is not to blame. Poised for flight, wings spread bright, spring from night into the sun. Don't stop to run. She can fly like a lie. She can't be outdone. Tell me the cost. I can pay. Let me go. Tell me love is not lost. Sell everything. Without love, day to day, insanity is king. I will pay, day by day, anyway. Lock, bolt, and key. Crippled but free. I was blind all the time. I was learning to see. Help on the way. I know only this. I've got you today. Don't fly away, because I love what I love, and I want it that way. I will stay one more day, like I say. Honey, it's you making it too. Without love in the dream, it'll never come true. God, I love that song. Words by Robert Hunter, music by Jerry Garcia. That makes a lot of sense to me. <laughs> uh, Can we read that again? Is that right? Paradise waits on the crest of a wave, her angels in flame. She has no pain. Like a child, she is pure. She is not to blame. Poised for flight, wings spread bright, spring from night into the sun. Don't stop to run. She can fly like a lie. She can't be outdone. Tell me the cost. I can pay. Let me go. Tell me love is not lost. Sell everything. Without love, day to day, insanity is king. I will pay, day by day, anyway, lock, bolt, and key. Crippled but free. I was blind all the time. I was learning to see. Help on the way. I know only this. I've got you today. Don't fly away, because I love what I love, and I want it that way. I will stay one more day. Like I say, honey, it's you making it too. Without love in the dream, it'll never come true. It's perfect. You know, I read the stuff from like Rumi. I, read, I have like this uh, ancient, well, I thought I had it over here. <clears throat> like ancient Sanskrit poems. Have some Hafiz, which is uh, I think it Hafiz was like from what a thousand years ago, something like that. Um, um, maybe it wasn't that long ago. No, oh, Glebe is like a few uh, hundred years ago, or something. Whatever. But I, I read all like all these like ancient poets that are like Persian and like this Chinese stuff and this Sanskrit stuff. But Robert Hunter, man, God, it's so good. It's so good. Well, I think I will. Um, I guess I'll just uh, start to wrap the show up. I don't want to just like read this book while I'm uh, trying to record here, but. Um, 
appreciate everyone listening to the show. The show is doing really well. Um, yeah, in the, in the future, I'll, I'll still talk about what we're doing at the gym, but I, I don't want this show to be just like commercials for the gym. I, I, the the point, yeah, I want people to know about it, but I'm not just like do a however long I've been doing a half hour, forty five minute commercial or whatever it is. Uh, the idea is what I, what I was really wanting it is to convey this sense of. People can do this. When I was first, uh, I started to talk about it, but when I, the f- some of the first stuff I was reading the prep for this podcast was my dad's writings, and I almost read them on the air, but I, I decided not to. But a lot of it was just like really inspirational stuff. Some of it maybe you know you could even say it's kind of like cliche, but that's okay. But it's just. It, it was good stuff. It was, um, I think some of it he was copying from books, it looked like, and some of it, I think he was just like off of the top of his head and like just thinking about things, visualizing and writing down what he wants to happen. And a lot of this is, you know, a couple of years before he died, a year before, months before, and then even his will. His will was in there, and his will was just, it wasn't typed out by an attorney. It wasn't, uh, it was just like, you know, the stuff between me and my, my sister. You know, it's like, okay, I get the guitars and, you know, the guitar picks and accessories and that kind of stuff. And, you know, she gets all of the books and she gets the, um, you know, it's like, and he had a couple cars. I get one of them. She gets a different one. She gets another one. And, uh, it was you know, it wasn't like he had like this huge estate to you know. There was like a you know, a bit of an insurance. Uh, policy and um, you know, but like, like, what do we, what do we leave behind? You know, and you know, parts of it's like, okay, the guitar picks. I still have those. Um, most of the, well, all of the guitars that he left me, I, I've I sold them. They were um, pretty like low end guitars, nothing you know wrong with them or anything, but um, you know, I, I have this other guitar and he played it, which I think is a cool thing. Um, he died in 2005. So I've had this guitar since before then. Uh, he left music behind stuff that he wrote, stuff that he recorded. But when I'm reading through, I was just like reading his will and like what he was writing, like what it's worth considering, like what, what he really left me. And a lot of it is not, you know, like, you know, tons of money or something like that. You know, he was generous with what he had. He didn't, he usually didn't have a lot, but he was generous with what he had. And uh, it's like this coffee mug, you know, it's uh, many, 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 many cups of coffee have been drank out of this cup, out of this mug. And so like, what are the thoughts that I think, what are the experiences that I'm having while drinking this out of this mug. So I I did a show called Coffee with the Rifleman. And uh, I kind of get into like what what coffee kind of means. And, you know, it's more than just coffee. Anyways, uh, There's a little bit more to that, but I think I'm just going to leave it there. 
maybe I'll read some of his stuff on on the show later on. So thank you everyone for listening. Um, the next show almost certainly will not be about the gym. <laughs> uh, and my mention it and stuff. There's nothing wrong with mentioning that too, but um, I don't know what it'll be. I have a few ideas. So uh, also most people are just listening. There is a YouTube channel also. Uh, it's the Fitness and Consciousness YouTube channel. And if you want to follow my Instagram, it's at Hadley Fitness, H-A-D-L-E-Y Fitness. And have a good everything. Thanks.